and we're back. <laughs> so uh, I worked for years with uh, Trees for Growth, uh, which is a community group that does uh, tree planting uh, through experiential education programs with uh, classes. And when we first started in 1991, uh, the group decided that the orphaned piece of the urban forest, in our view, the, the place that had the most opportunity that nobody else was paying attention to, was uh, industrial areas. And a bit of uh, you know, transportation corridors as well, and, and a bit of institutional, but, but really we saw a big opportunity in industrial areas, because Guelph in 1990 had uh, a slew of large factories on even larger lots, huge lots, like 50 acre lots in some, some cases, uh, with tens of acres around the periphery in some cases, waiting for future expansion or severance or whatever. Uh, and we went out and we talked to those uh, folks, uh, would it not be a good idea to plant some trees around the periphery where it would be safe from future development, uh, but not uh, not hinder them in any way, but, but contribute to the urban forest uh, and, and carry on. Um, so we had a fair bit of uptake with that. Out of the 100 and trees for Guelph has planted about 120,000 trees in Guelph. I should say the school kids have, yeah. <laughs> uh, with trees for Guelph uh, organizational support. Uh, and of those, I'm going to say probably 30,000 or so went into those industrial yeah. scenarios, and most of them are still there. Um, and. So I contrast that. So that's 1990-91. So yeah, uh, maybe before some of you were born, but yeah. not that long ago for a, for a program like this. And today, those opportunities don't seem to exist anymore. Uh, today, new factories have a strip of grass about this wide around the periphery. Uh, there are no acres and acres of, of free space anymore. And that's, that's consistent with the general thrust towards intensification. And it makes sense because if every factory has acres of unused land around it, then we're pushing uh, out into the greenfield space in the, er in the rural areas much faster than we otherwise would need to. So I'm, I'm kind of torn by this, and this is, this is the part that resonates with me. Uh, I recognize that intensification, intensification is good, uh, but I kind of uh, bemoan the lost opportunities for shoehorning more trees in there, yeah. into those uh, spots. And it's that same balance. same balance yeah. with with everything. If uh, if there's no development here, where is it going to be? Yeah. Everything is near some natural feature, uh, and and so. The job of people like Adele is to, to try to make that trade-off as favorable for the community as possible. And of course, uh, when it's a, like a trade-off where there is as many people win as possible, or as few people lose yeah. as possible, and as as few natural areas as possible. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you can imagine the, the folks that do that work; their hearts in it uh, yeah. for the natural areas. But they're working on behalf of the taxpaying community, and, and so they have to strike a balance that works for everyone. It's, a, it's very difficult. Yeah. And actually, emotionally taxing. You may not want to go into that. <laughs>